Her name's Nicole, and she's living in a cozy 32-foot tiny house with her little dog, Poppy. Their snug corner is situated on a picturesque parcel near San Francisco in the East Bay of California, where there's an abundance of foxtails. To keep Poppy safe from them, Nicole puts a special hood on her during their walks. Nicole found her ranch-style tiny home on Craigslist. It was created by the Mitchcraft Company in Colorado, in the city of Fort Collins, and then transported by truck straight to the site of her future residence. Nicole knew exactly that she wanted to see cedar on her house, and that the house had to be two-toned. When the idea came to her, she immediately drew it on paper. As a result, she came up with two design options, one with a small tree, the other with mountains on the other side of the house. At first, she thought to draw the mountains at the front, but then decided that they would look better at the back. Nicole chose a tiny house because she wanted to design and arrange it herself. She has always liked to deal with space design. Initially, she just thought and dreamed about a house on wheels. Then, she spent many sleepless nights drawing plans and it brought her joy. In her house, every inch is well thought out and used properly, so I recommend watching the video to the end to make sure it's really so. Upon entering the house, we are immediately greeted by the kitchen. It has everything that is in regular houses, a medium refrigerator, a propane gas stove, and there's also a multifunctional kitchen stove, which serves as a microwave, hood, and conventional oven at the same time, which is very convenient, functional, and it saves a lot of space. Nicole decided to put glass cabinets in the kitchen because they visually make the space bigger, and also, they are easy to decorate with film when the holidays come. Her sink is installed right by the window so that when she washes dishes, she can always enjoy the beautiful view outside. And the trash bins are hidden in a pull-out cabinet under the work surface in the kitchen. There is enough space to place one bin for regular trash and another for recyclables side by side. At the edge of the kitchen stands a tall cabinet, which clearly separates the kitchen from the living room. This cabinet protects the living room from water splashes when she washes dishes, and it also has convenient pull-out drawers. There, she stores a first aid kit, bags, and cleaning supplies. Under the sink, there was a bit of free space, and at first, Nicole didn't know what to put there, but then, she thought to store a baking sheet or other kitchen utensils. And there was also a spot for the removable rack from the microwave oven. Nicole's folding chairs do not take up much space, much like the countertop that's built into the wall of the house, allowing her to utilize the space in her tiny home to its full potential. She set the height of the table to match that of the kitchen countertop to avoid having to bend over. Nicole works and dines at this table. This table can easily be folded away if not needed. Beneath it, there's another storage. Following the kitchen is a small living room featuring a bookshelf that continues the storage space from the table. Next to it, in the living area, is a modular sofa that Nicole found on Home Reserve. It arrives in flat packaging, almost like something from Ikea. The advantage of modular sofas is the ability to rearrange the pieces, refreshing the space each time. Additionally, it's easy to order fabric and change the sofa's color to something new, which also allows for a change in the interior. Another remarkable feature of this sofa is that under each cushion, there is a storage space for items such as board games, a hammock, or a heater for when it really gets cold. Even more storage space is located in the ottoman, where Nicole keeps repair supplies, luggage bags, and tools. Nicole needed to find a builder for her home. She began searching for builders by creating an Excel spreadsheet and shortlisting the best candidates. Then, she came across Mitchcraft and went to visit them. Mitch stood out from the others with an attention to detail and craftsmanship that Nicole required. As it turned out, Mitch also lived in a tiny house, which was definitely an additional plus in choosing a specialist. Above the living room is Nicole's second loft. She uses it as a work area, and to get there, one must use a ladder that she designed together with Mitch. The ladder is hidden and fits very conveniently between the beams. It's also easy and convenient to use with a mechanism similar to a rail track and can be secured with hooks. This is Nicole's office. She now works remotely and appreciates having a separate space for this. In the past, Nicole was a dog trainer, which later helped her quickly find common ground with her, at that time, Puppy Poppy. Before going up to the second floor, she asks the dog if it wants to go up with her, and if Poppy puts her paws on the ladder, then Nicola takes her along. Next to the refrigerator in the kitchen, there's a sliding door that leads to the bathroom. It is really spacious for a tiny house. This room has everything necessary, a shower stall, a composting toilet on top of a flushing toilet, and a large sink. The composting toilet was installed in case there would be no sewer hookup at the parking spot. 
It's a good solution that allows disposing of waste even without a sewer on the street. The shower stall turned out to be shorter than needed, so it was decided to tile the space up to the ceiling. Nicole liked this solution and chose the tile color herself. Under the sink, there are deep drawers for storage. There, Nicole stores even those things that do not belong in the bathroom, but are more convenient to keep right under the sink, as there is a lot of space. Above the sink, there is a window that creates natural light, and next to it, there is a medicine cabinet with a mirror inside the door. Mitch chose the right size so that the cabinet door completely covers the window. Since it opens, Nicole can adjust the natural light during makeup application and also bring the mirror closer to her face, which has many advantages. Above the bathroom is the bedroom, but to get there, you need to go up the stairs. And this swan neck staircase serves as an excellent storage space, and Nicole uses these lower drawers to store shoes, as they are right next to the door, and thus the shoes do not clutter the passage. One of these drawers can be opened while in the bathroom. Also, the back part of the staircase opens almost entirely from the outside, and that's where the propane tanks are stored. Upstairs, at the top of the stairs, is the bedroom, the coziest part of the tiny house. One of the most common uses of the gooseneck is to have a standing bedroom where you can stand up fully, and Nicole created this bedroom to be standalone. But since she doesn't need much space above her head, instead of putting the bed right in the gooseneck, she placed it in the loft. This arrangement allows her to get out of bed and dress immediately. Nicole has two movable steps that she climbs, which also serve as drawers for storing linens. Also, in her bedroom, there is a washer-dryer combo. When Nicole first moved into the tiny house, she still had Poppy, and she wanted to make sure that a dog of any size could fit next to the bed. Previously, there was a crate in this place, but now there is a dog sofa. In the cupboard above the dog sofa, there is enough space to store bedding, extra sheets, and blankets. The entire wall opposite the bed is a closet, which allows not only for storing blankets, but also clothes for the off-season. The sliding door that leads to the wardrobe is a shelving system for women's jewelry. Nicole saw this idea in another tiny house, and Mitch agreed to replicate it. This house is truly beautiful and makes every inch of the tiny house functional. Nicole is really happy living in it. What do you think of the house? Write in the comments what you think and if you liked her tiny house.